Welcome to worship at Bethesda this Trinity Sunday, June 7th. We're so glad that you have joined us uh, to give praise to God and to bring before God uh, the burdens and the joys of our hearts. In these days, uh, we are in the middle of a troubled world and a troubled nation. We stand in solidarity with our siblings of color as they have experienced and protested a brutality and the system of racism that is inherent in our United States. We are glad that today our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, has offered a sermon for us today and in fact revised an earlier sermon to include the context of the murder of George Floyd in the last weeks. Bishop Eaton uh, will offer the gospel and the sermon for today, and I invite you to join in and participate as fully as you are able, and to join us uh, for coffee hour on Zoom if you have the login information, uh, which will combine with learning hour at 1030, where we will make uh, virtual picnic plates uh, for a Sunday school picnic, and then at around 11 o'clock, offer blessing for high school graduates, and then uh, join a conversation for coffee hour. You're also invited uh, later on Sunday at seven o'clock to join me again on Zoom uh, for uh, prayer in a time of pandemic and racial unrest at seven o'clock. If you need the login information for these Zoom meetings, please email me at pastor at bethesdanewhaven.org. God bless us, God bless our world, and bring us all to reconciliation in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin with a mind and a heart to end racism. Gracious God, we thank you for making one human family of all the peoples of the earth and for creating all the wonderful diversity of cultures. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us. From the bondage of racism that denies the humanity of every human being and the prejudices within us that deny the dignity of those who are oppressed. Lord, set us free. Lord, have mercy from racism that blinds oppressors to the destruction caused by the spirit and practice of racial injustice. Christ, set us free. Christ, have mercy. From the racism that will not recognize the work of your spirit in other cultures. Lord, set us free. Lord, have mercy. Forgive those of us who have been silent and apathetic in the face of racial intolerance and bigotry, both overt and subtle, public and private, and take away the arrogance 
and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us and help us to find that unity that is the fruit of righteousness and will enable us to become your beloved community. Empower us to speak boldly for justice and truth and help us to deal with one another without hatred or bitterness, working together with mutual forbearance and respect, and work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purposes. O God of unconditional love, you who show no partiality in respect to people or nations, we have heard your good news of great joy for all the people. We hear that good news, and in hearing, believe. We know that your sanctuary is a house of worship for all people, with no regard for the color of our skin. As we worship you, knit us into a people, a seamless garment of many colors. May we celebrate our unity made whole in our diversity. Forgive us for our inability to let our old selves die to the world. We acknowledge that we participate in structures that are inherently racist, and yet we so often do nothing to remedy it. Show us when we fail, when we judge others according to the color of their flesh. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come now and worship the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. To Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God. Author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom, guide us to all truth by your spirit, 
that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together place and let the dry land appear and it was so God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good then God said let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it and it was so earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And so it was. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds in the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God
God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and earth when they were created. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, you whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them, yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands, you have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the plants of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDaid have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? 
Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. 
the crucifixion of an unarmed, handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are called into unity with one another. Yet especially this week, our nation is experiencing painful and profound disunity. Let us preface our prayers this morning with several minutes of silence, meditating on the sorrows of our country, its history of racial injustice, and its resistance in bringing about liberty and equality for all. Held together in the mercy of the triune God, let us join with one another to pray for the many needs of the world. O triune God, bless the preaching and reception of your word, and pour your spirit onto congressional leaders and all the baptized. Give wisdom and stamina to those who work in national church services for their unprecedented tasks. Hold the churches of all denominations together in one as you are one. Holy One, Holy Three, for the church we pray. Grant your threefold blessing. blessing. O triune God, as at the beginning of time, your word and spirit visited the earth. So now sustain this planet with your renewing care. Teach us to care for the very good earth that you have created. Calm the summer storms and send rain where there is drought. Holy One, Holy Three, for the earth we pray. Grant, Grant your threefold three blessing. O triune God, in whom three are one, God with your powerful mercy our troubled nation where relationships are fractured and injustice marks the land. Heal our wounded people, give hope to the despairing, protect the protesters, preserve our cities from more turmoil, and keep away those intent on destruction. Guard stores and homes from fire, and save us from bloodshed. 
aid protesters, police, and National Guard as they stand against violence. Assist our president, our governors, and our legislatures in moving forward from a history of racism into a future of peace. Holy One, Holy Three, for our nation we pray. Grant, Grant your, your threefold, threefold blessing. blessing. O Triune God, bless the Aboriginal peoples and lands around the globe. We commemorate before you today Chief Seattle, and we ask you to protect the native peoples of this land from yet more dangers, from outside aggression, and from internal despair. Holy One, Holy Three, for all tribes and clans we pray. Grant, Grant your, your threefold, threefold blessing. O Triune God, open our eyes to see your likeness in everyone. Heal the sick, uphold all who face oppression, feed the hungry. Visit refugee camps with power to save. We ask your mercy on the millions who suffer from the coronavirus the sick, the dying, the bereaved, and the unemployed. Uphold medical workers and accompany researchers as they seek a vaccine. Embrace the children who live confused and sad. We pray also for those who are suffering in this trying time, especially Martin Gaynor, Doug Gray, Pat Hadrich, and all those we name now before you. Holy One, Holy Three, for all in need we pray. Grant, Grant your, your threefold, threefold blessing. O Triune God, as summer begins, give safety to those who travel and contentment to those who cannot, especially Priscilla Melendez and Anibal Gonzalez. Give a sense of Sabbath rest to those who vacation plans have been canceled and grant activities to the children who cannot attend summer camp. Shine your sun on farmers' fields so that enough food will grow for our needs. Shield all farm workers from the worst of the heat. Holy One, Holy Three, for summertime we pray. Grant, Grant your threefold blessing. O God, bring us into the mystery of your triune life. We praise you as life-giver, pain-bearer, mercy-maker. Accept now the petitions of our own hearts. Holy One, Holy Three, for ourselves we pray. Grant, Grant your threefold blessing. blessing. O Triune God, we thank you for the beautiful moments you have gifted us in this time of trial. We especially offer up blessings for Logan McLean and Paul Strike, who will be married today. Holy One, Holy Three, for happiness we pray. Grant, Grant your threefold, threefold blessing. O Triune God, thank you for feeding our curiosity and love for education. We offer up congratulations for all who have graduated this year especially Sarah Davies, David Judd, and Ruth Courtright. Holy One, Holy Three, for education we pray. Grant, Grant your threefold blessing. O Triune God, we praise you for all the saints who, in the past and the present, have lived and died in you, especially Kenneth Wiley, father of Clarissa Wiley Youngberg. At the end, bring us all into the tender power of your presence. Holy One, Holy Three, for now and forever we pray. Grant, Grant your, your threefold, threefold blessing. Hear these words, O God, and receive also those petitions that are too deep for words, joining our prayers with those of Jesus Christ, who intercedes us now and forever. Amen. Join us now for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done, done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.